Welcome to the inaugural episode of Connect Canyons, a podcast about learning and teaching in Utah's newest and fifth largest school district. Learning is about making connections, and as the name of this podcast suggests, we are here to invite our listeners to connect and learn with us. This is a show about what we teach in Canyon School District, how we teach, and why. In the coming months, we'll get up close and personal with some of the connection makers, personalities, programs, and prospects that make our schools click. We'll meet national experts, too, and today we have a special guest, Canyons District's new superintendent, Dr. Rick L. Robbins. I can't think of a better way to kick off our podcast than with an introduction to our new superintendent. So welcome, Rick, and thanks for taking time to chat with us today. Absolutely, Kirsten. Happy to be here with you. This is terrific. Well, if it's okay, I may just take a moment to share a couple highlights from your career just to, by way of introduction, and then we can, we can chat a little bit. Um, Dr. Robbins, who was named superintendent by the Canyons Board of Education after a national search, brings 24 years of experience as an educator to his role as the Chief Executive Officer of Canyons. Prior to joining Canyons, he was the superintendent of the Jewab School District based in Nephi, Utah, where he oversaw efforts to improve the district's graduation rate, which stands at an impressive 97%. That's a double-digit increase over 10 years. He has classroom experience as a history teacher, has worked as a high school principal and assistant principal for different districts, both large and small. In 2012, in fact, he was named Utah High School Principal of the Year, and he has received national honors as an innovative superintendent to watch. And so welcome aboard. And I'd like to share by uh, start by sharing a personal observation, which, you know, of the past few weeks I've come to know you as a really approachable leader, someone who values uh, and puts a premium on relationships and, and who really leads by serving. So I imagine it has been very difficult coming on board amid a pandemic when really you've had to introduce yourself to employees and patrons over Zoom. I know that you've had some personal meetings with principals the last few weeks, but really, I mean, a safe distance of six feet, no shaking of hands. So talk to me about what that's been like. Yeah, this has been a a very unique uh, situation to say the least. You know, first, I, I just want to express my deep gratitude to the entire Canyons uh, School District uh, community for really opening their arms up to me. And, and it, is, it, it is sort of surreal, right, to you know, kind of be this mythical figure that's behind Zoom and on camera and, and not uh, being able to shake hands and hug people and, and really you know, um, build those relationships in, on a face-to-face uh, level. But I look forward to that, and I know those days are coming. I'm so blessed to be here, and I really feel like I'm, you know, I'm very fortunate to leave a great school district in, in Nephi and in Juab a School District, and I feel like I'm coming to the best school district in Utah, uh, in the western United States, and, and one of the best districts and lighthouse districts in the country. So uh, it's an honor to be here. What... So as, as you have gotten around uh, and you've gotten to know Canyons a little bit better, um, what maybe speak a little bit about what interests you in Canyons. You've referred to it as a lighthouse district, and then maybe talk about some of your first impressions. Well, I think for me, one of the things that was very attractive is that uh, Canyon School District, district much like Juab School District, has uh, innovation uh, as one of its tenants, and, and that's something that... Uh, I think uh, in the day and age that we live in, it really is a time to rethink education and what teaching and learning uh, might look like. And I think the the virus has really ushered in that opportunity. Um, for good or for bad, it is, it's forced us as a nation and as a state and as a community um, to really think about our priorities and, and what matters most. And so... Uh, for me, uh, you know, recognizing Canyons as a leader and as an innovative district and really looking forward, uh, that very much a- attracted me. And, and then I think, you know, right there near the top is just the, the people and the relationships that exist in Canyons. I, I, I had always been aware that, um, you know, Canyons really considered itself a family. And I think the opportunity for me to be part of a district that's so new and really developing that culture and those family ties and those bonds, um, you know, was was very attractive and something that speaks to my own um, personal values and beliefs. And so, uh, for that 
in that respect, it, it's just been a great fit. And, uh, you know, I've been, ve I felt very at peace from day one uh, coming here. So, so I'd, um, talk about maybe some of the ideas in education that are kind of bubbling up right now that you find really exciting. Well, I think the idea of personalized learning is something that's really emerging that um, is taking on new meaning, right? And, and in recent months, um, prior to COVID, I, I think we all kind of had this idea that personalized learning was something that was, you know, really only centered around technology. But what we've come to find out is that through this whole COVID situation is that our students, and including our own children, including us, we all have different needs at different times. And that, you know, the, the idea that one size fits all really for an education system does not meet the needs uh, of our students and our families. And so uh, it, it's really brought to light uh, what personalized learning can be and mean, which I, I think is just um, absolutely exciting. And the fact that, you know, this is our time to kind of re-envision and reimagine what that can look like is, is very appealing. So yeah, let's talk about returning to school in the fall. Um, schools have some pretty big rocks to move in terms of preparing, right, to keep children and employees healthy and safe while continuing, you know, quality instruction. Um, what, ha what have the planning efforts been like? Kind of what have they entailed? Maybe some, what, are, what are some of the guiding principles that are, are sort of you have as sort of your, your light post as you make these decisions? Yeah, so um, first, I just want to recognize to, um, you know, the, the impact uh, of the situation and the um, seriousness, because I know that there are a lot of families out there that have been directly impacted by COVID. And, and I, I first want to just express, um, you know, my empathy for them and just, um, you know, my, my feelings for them, because Without saying that, you know, and recognizing that, I don't think we can take the, the next step forward. So, um, you know, thinking about that, uh, we are going to open school. Uh, our students uh, desperately need to reconnect, um, not just for the academic part of it, but maybe more importantly, the, the mental health uh, side of this. And as human beings, and especially children, you know, we know that's foundational to their to their growth, and so it's important that we get back to school uh, in the fall. Uh, for me, and um, the way that I'm approaching this and, and really envisioning this uh, for Canyon School District is kind of uh, uh, in three different ways, um, and really it, it, it starts with restoring um, school, and that means a lot of different things, right? That means building relationships, restoring relationships, restoring our, our mental health, our physical health, our academic uh, well-being and standing with our with our students, um, but trying to return and restore students to to that something that's normal in their lives, and then secondly, it's kind of that reimagined piece, right? It's kind of thinking new about what can be, and it's offering opportunities and options to our students and our parents as they think about their own uh, situation, uh, and at the same time really ensuring that everybody returns safely, right? So um, putting those provisions in place that our, our students and our families, our teachers, our staff can all return with peace of mind that they'll be safe, but at the same time understanding that we're gonna deliver teaching and learning and this educational ex experience and experiment a little bit different, that it, it might not look like it always has. We're looking at this in the fall as an opportunity to maybe do things, you know, a, a little bit different. And I think that's fantastic. And then finally, you know, really renewing all of those goals and dreams and visions that our kids have for the future. And I think, you know, that's something that we're all holding on to. And we know as Americans that that is so critical for our success is that the individuals have, you know, that opportunity to, to really chase after their dreams and their goals. So, um, you know, I, I'm excited for the, for the future. It's going to be a challenge. There's no question about it. Um, you know, there are, there are no guarantees. I, I wish I could, I could offer everyone a guarantee that this is exactly how, you know, it will go. Unfortunately, you know, with COVID, we know that that's not how this works and that the situation is very fluid. But one thing that I tell everybody is that we, you know, we, uh, and I say we as a community and as a 
school district have to be comfortable with the uncomfortable. And that's not easy, but um, you know, let's take it as an opportunity and go forward. Yeah, I love that. Restore, reimagine, and renew, right? I mean, a renewal of the promise of education, really. I mean, that's... Yes, absolutely. A new version of the three R's. <laughs> yes. The pandemic, you know, in addition to disrupting in-person education, has also kind of laid bare some social um, inequities. And I know that's something that you're pretty passionate about. Maybe what are some of the conversations that you're hoping that we have as a district around the issues of equity, inclusion, and social justice? For me, you know, really what it boils down to is, is you know, meeting people's needs where they're at. And um, having said that, you know, saying it and doing it are two different things. I think we need to listen more to each other. We need to learn more from each other. Uh, we need to respect more uh, for each other. And I think as equity becomes more and more of a, a north star that we all you know kind of shines bright and that we all row towards um, meeting the individual needs of our students that you know you will see tremendous successes with our with our students and you know i'm really looking forward to that what um if you were to look back you know a year from now on the past 12 months right so what what would be some of the things that you would have hoped to accomplish? Or? You know, with most issues and situations that we deal with in life, you know, there's always a path forward um, that, that kind of gets us out of the situation. And unfortunately, with COVID, that has been a real struggle. It's not clear, you know, what the next step is. In fact, we're not even sure what the next day will look like. And so... Um, when we look back on this, you know, I, I hope it's made us better as a state and as a country and as a community. Um, it shouldn't be a, a political partisan issue, right? I mean, it's still, our children are the one place as a, as a community, as a state, as a country that we all agree, you know, that is our most cherished, prized asset that we have is our children. And I don't think anyone would disagree with me on that. And so the passion and the energy and the support that we pour in to Canyon School District and our education system as a state, you know, is worth it. That investment is, is the future. And, um, you know, we, we, we just, we owe it to our kids to, to do that. And I know we will. And, you know, I'm just, I'm proud to be part of that. Well, we're glad to have you here. And honestly, thank you so much for taking time out of your very busy schedule to, to, to talk a little bit about, um, you know, your expectations and your hopes for the coming year. and Thank you. Yeah, looking forward to the next 12 months and, and beyond. <laughs> Thank you very much for having me. Join us again for the next episode of Connect Canyons, a podcast sponsored by Utah's Canyons School District. If you have any comments for us, questions, or ideas for topics you'd like us to explore, email us at communications at canyonsdistrict.org. You can also follow us on Twitter at Canyons District and at K Stewart Utah. Today's show was edited by Amy Nielsen and Stephanie Christensen. We had engineering help from Grant Taylor and have benefited from the web design expertise of Carson Fairborn. If you like this episode, please be sure to share it with a friend. I'm Kirsten Stewart, and this is Canyon School District. <laughs>